You know, when you first start using hand tools, the cost of sharpening supplies can be a bit surprising. It can be tough to come to terms with the fact that it could cost you $500 to sharpen the blade of a plane that you paid $25 for at a local yard sale. Getting set up to sharpen your hand tools can require a significant investment, but it doesn't have to cost a fortune. There are budget-friendly options. Ultimately, it'll be up to you to decide what's best for your budget and goals. But one thing's for sure, hand tools don't work well if they're not sharp. So investing in some sharpening supplies isn't an option, it's a requirement if you're gonna use hand tools. The most budget-friendly option at the outset is to use wet and dry sandpaper. The system requires nothing more than several grits of sandpaper and something flat to adhere them to, like a granite countertop, a piece of glass, or a floor tile. The benefit of this system is the initial cost. You can get set up for 20 to 30 dollars. However, the sandpaper tends to wear out rather quickly and require frequent replacement. So while the initial cost is low, there's an ongoing cost for sandpaper that pretty much never stops. A step up in cost, the second option are abrasive stones. And these come in a variety of styles like oil stones, water stones, and diamond stones. And each one of these systems has its pros and cons. Oil stones are used with honing oil. However, the oil isn't used to lubricate the stone, it's used to fill the pores of the stone to prevent them from clogging with steel particles. If the stone clogs and glazes over, it'll stop cutting. When well cared for, good oil stones can last several lifetimes because they wear incredibly slowly. However, slow wearing also means they're slightly slower cutting as well. I like oil stones for antique tools, but I'm not a huge fan of them for modern abrasion resistant steels. The most commonly used form of abrasive stone today are water stones. The most popular are man-made, essentially a brick of abrasive and binder formed under heat and pressure. And they come in grits from extremely coarse to extremely fine. As their name suggests, water stones use water to fill the pores. Some require soaking, others require just a splash or a spritz. They only need water because the stones are much, much softer than oil stones. So the abrasive particles tend to break away, exposing fresh grit as the stones are used. Because the stones are wearing and constantly exposing fresh grit, water stones cut extremely quickly, even modern abrasion resistant steels. However, because they wear so quickly, care must be taken to make sure that they don't get hollowed out. By using a flat reference stone that won't hollow out, like this diamond stone, to flatten the face of the stone each time it's used, it's easy to maintain these stones nice and flat. Which of course brings us to the diamond stone. These stones are really gaining in popularity as people tire of the mess and maintenance of water stones. Diamond stones are nothing more than a steel or aluminum plate coated in diamond dust. The finer the diamond dust, the finer the stone cuts. Now these stones can use either water or oil to float the steel particles away because they don't have any pores to clog. In my limited experience with diamond stones, I find that they tend to cut very aggressively when the stones are new. However, they quickly lose that aggressiveness as the sharp points of the diamonds tend to get worn down. While diamond stones are the hot thing right now, I'm not a big fan of the way they cut steel, so I tend to save them for flattening my water stones and occasionally for flattening the back of a chisel or plain iron. I really don't use diamonds much for honing. Once you've chosen a sharpening media, there are a few accessories you might want to consider. Things like a honing guide, a grinder, and a strop. A honing guide holds the blade at a consistent angle to the stone, and they come in a variety of styles and prices. The most common is the side clamping version. However, another style is the top clamping version, where the clamp actually grips the top of the blade rather than the sides of the blade. 
Many folks prefer the top clamping style because this style can hold blades with angled edges, like skewed blades. Whereas none but the most expensive side clamp style can hold anything but a square ground blade. However, it is a bit more challenging to register a blade square in a top clamp honing guide. Of course, a honing guide isn't required. You can just hold the blade freehand. And I'll show you how to hone both with and without a honing guide when we get into the sharpening process. Another useful accessory tool for sharpening is some kind of grinder. And if you decide to add a grinder to your setup, be sure to get yourself a solid tool rest as well, because the tool rests that come with most grinders is typically pretty useless. And just like the honing guide, you don't need a grinder. It just makes changing bevel angles or fixing a damaged edge faster. And once again, when we get to the sharpening process, I'll show you how to do it both with and without the grinder. One accessory that I personally wouldn't be without is a leather strop charged with honing compound. Now this could be nothing more than a stiff, thick piece of leather, but I chose to glue my strop to a nice flat piece of hardwood. The honing compound is rubbed over the leather, just like a crayon, and it's full of abrasive. And then the tool can just be drawn over the strop to quickly touch up the edge. Our discussion of sharpening equipment wouldn't be complete without mentioning machines like the Tormek, the WorkSharp, or the Veritas Power Sharpener. Now these machines are designed as a complete system to both grind and hone your tools. However, most are quite expensive. A lot of woodworkers really like these machines. However, I have no direct experience with any of them, so I won't discuss them other than to mention them as an option. I've always done my honing with abrasive stones. I find them quick and easy to use, and I can still sharpen when the power goes out. So in our discussions on sharpening, I'm going to focus primarily on the use of abrasive stones.